Hey guys, welcome to the Mediocre Cover Band Guitar Guy. It's the early morning, Sunday morning edition. It's like 6.45ish or something. Yes, it's a homeschooling mug. It's going to tie into today's video. First of all, thank you for the support on my last video, uh, last couple of videos. It's been great. Uh, if you can keep that going, you make this old fellow pretty happy. So please like and subscribe if you want. It's up to you. So I'm going to talk about YouTube channels today because I've been watching, um, not that I've been watching, it's been coming through on my suggested, whatever you call them, uh, items, that uh, there are a lot of guys that are griping about, you know, YouTube and YouTube holding them back from making money and things like that. I don't necessarily think that's the case because I think that the more successful you are, the more money they make off you. And I mean, you're not going to get the same cut off of advertising that they're going to get because they're a business. That's it. It's a company. And businesses are set up with the intent to make profit, unless you're a non-for-profit organization who uh, give back to the community or whatnot. You're not going to see the same shares because that's what they're there for. They've got a bigger uh, overhead um, and projected salaries, all these things, you know, that they have to pay plus then pay themselves plus buy their new Lamborghini. Thus making it a little bit harder for you to make money on their platform. But things people need to realize is that YouTube gives us the ability to put up videos for free. Some people are successful. Some people are me. And that's just the, the nature of the beast. I don't know. Anybody my age can remember back in the 90s, there was a Tuesday every month when they would release records, albums, physical copies. And you'd have CDs, you know, vinyl cassettes, right down to eight tracks on a certain day. And there would be an upwards of 5,000 released on this particular Tuesday in North America, not worldwide, North America. And I'm sure it went worldwide with the record companies, but this was the statistic I heard. So you got 5,000 albums coming out and you're trying to push through, you know, all that mountain of music to get your own music heard. So I'm pretty sure a lot of great music probably got stifled down, whether it was from, you know, lack of promotion or distribution or just a really bad record contract at the time. But YouTube gives us this ability to do all these things for ourselves for free. And people are relying on it now as a, I guess, permanent revenue stream, like for their income. And I think you need to realize with the history of these things, like Facebook, people walking away from that, and especially younger people, and call it an old person's platform, and going to Instagram and all these things, is where is YouTube going to be in five years? Is it still going to be what it is right now? Is it going to eat itself up? and just disappear um there you know a lot of guys started channels present company included during covid you know i think tom bukovac started his mainly because he was bored and just wanted that interaction kind of similar to why i did it but you know he's tom bukovac and he's head and shoulders above everybody he's like the god of guitar youtube channels in my opinion uh, I think guys like Guthrie trap started their youtube channels during the time because they needed to stay present for things that they had, uh, there are other businesses like, I mean, doing online guitar lessons, working for companies that issued lessons and things like that, and keeping visibility in there. Um, that was important to them. And then you had guys like myself. I started a channel just on a whim. <laughs> I had a friend suggest it, you know, to do something, and I did it. And here we are today, you know. Like I said, some are successful, some are me. And I think a lot of guys are griping now it comes up in my uh, my suggested videos a lot guys that are complaining about youtube and they keep saying how youtube is holding them back from making a living you can't really look at this as this is this is even harder than playing music because you can't get a gig and get a guaranteed payout i mean if you're going to make a living at this are you you need to sit down and say to yourself is this video worth a million views so i can make a living from it you know guys like rick beato <laughs> Rick Beato gripes about, you know, the monetization of videos and record companies stepping in. Of course they are. Record companies dropped the ball in the 90s, and now, you know, somebody has to justify their job by saying, I just saved us, uh, you know, $2.50 because I put a little disclaimer on Rick Beato's video, and now he can't make money from it. Um, there, there's a lot of things, you know, with these videos that you, you have to realize. It's either going to be hit or miss. I mean, there's a guy here in this province who does videos with, you know, the, and it says, I love playing my expensive guitars, basically. And 
you know, he gets like thousands and hundreds of thousands of views. He got one where he played uh, some pentatonic licks on a telly and it got a million views. But people found that appealing. You know what I mean? So other guys are doing videos on breakdowns of the modes. They're doing this, they're doing that. They're taking us whatever, and it doesn't get anything. Guys are explaining, you know, affordable ways to stack pedals, what pedals are affordable, things that are relevant to everyday players like ourselves, the weekend warriors we like to be called. Things that are relevant to us in our daily life that are affordable get overlooked because we'll always hop on a video and watch a guy do a demo of something that we can't afford. But once again, that's because it's got the bells and whistles and the shiny stuff. And uh, they, they put the work in. But if you're gonna like count on these things, you know, to make money or whatever, I know every time I post a video and I wake up the next day, my goal, 100 views. If I get to there, I'm like, okay, I don't feel like such a loser today. And people will laugh at it and go, well, you know, so-and-so did a video of him playing his Telecaster and he got a million views. Awesome. That's great. You know, people obviously liked what he was doing, right? And it broke through and it got in people's whatever, you know, it didn't get swallowed up by the whole algorithm thing. And he, he got it and that's all you can do. There, there's no control. You have very little control. You might think you have all this control and people will say when you have these channels, if you put the work in, you can do anything on YouTube. But it's not always the case. There's so much, I guess, from the viewer that catches their eye. There's, there's that one thing when you're scrolling through a video and you're like, oh, this looks pretty cool. I'm going to look at it. Like it's got the cool thumbnail, whatever. And some guys like kids that are screaming and making weird faces in their videos and, you know, cutting 40 years old and acting like a two year old. You know, that two year old that goes to a birthday party and beats up all the gifts and then his folks have to take him out of there and bring him home, you know, while he's thrown up in the back of the car. That kid. But that's it. You put a video out, you have to hope for the best. And that's the funny thing about YouTube is that it's free for us to put it up there. Um, they've got to pay probably someone to watch it and I guess deem if it's an appropriate video or whatever, but that's it. Um, so that, that's what I'm just saying, guys. Like these channels, it's hit or miss, but it's still free. It's great if you're advertising your band, if you've got an original band out and you want to like do videos, you can do the whole YouTube live thing now, which you don't see a lot of bands do with their shows, you know, because they're like, well, if we do it, we're giving it away for free. And I know I talk about money and that, but if I was writing my own songs and I was hoping to maybe get a record deal or sell my independent records, you kind of got to, in that you know genre or that, that sort of business, if you're, because that's what it is. When you're trying to sell yourself, it's still a business. People are, well, you're sold out to the machine. If you're playing gigs, you're doing business, okay? Unless you're giving them money or you're doing it 100% free all the time. You're doing business, so there's no selling out. You already sold out the first time you took a dollar to play a gig. Remember that, okay? So it's not selling out. You're doing business. So if you want to get your music out there, unless you want to give it away all the time, if you're looking to sell records, if you're looking to get your name out there, you're looking for that, that YouTube fame, you might have to take one for the team. If you're like myself and you're playing in a covers band, there's no real need of doing it. Because people aren't going to watch it here in small market. They're not going to... The guys that own green sleeves aren't going to look at a video and go, we should hire these. They don't give a shit. They probably don't even look at YouTube, right? They probably look at it to fix their faucets or something so they don't have to bring in a plumber and their wife is ragging on them that, you know, the tap in the kitchen's leaking. That's it. They're not looking at us because music is a part of their everyday life and they just want to get away from it like everybody else who wants to get away from work. Anyway, that's my rant about YouTube, guys. And uh, it's not even a rant. I think YouTube is a great thing. I think it's a useful tool for tools like myself and um, just you know use it for what it is you know you're you're doing this for free no one's charging you any money and it's it's a great platform anybody can start a youtube channel everybody should start a youtube channel and uh, we should get rid of these like girls that used to shake their ass on tiktok and show their boobs and are now farting in pots and pipes like and it's fake it's like pre-recorded farts like, do we really have to have society where you, you got to lip sync your farts? Like, I don't get it. Anyway, guys, thanks.